Okay, in this section, I'm going to derive the steady flow energy equation from first principles. And I'm also going to introduce a new property called enthalpy. Right, so before we can um, talk about the steady flow in energy equation, you first need to understand the concept, concept of flow work. Okay, so if we consider this pipe, okay, and it has a cross-sectional area A, and there's fluid th moving through this pipe at velocity C, okay? Now, to move that um, fluid down the pipe, and, um, you know, it's got a certain length out, to move that slug of um, liquid, um, we need a certain pressure to kind of push it down the pipe, okay? So hopefully you can all build up a picture of what we're trying to do here now. So now if we look at the, the force that's been applied to this fluid on this um, x-x plane here at the front, to, you know, this um, segment or this fluid length L, then if we look at the force, see what it is, is it's the pressure which is acting on that plane times by the area, okay? So pressure times area. And the work that's involved is, um, well, the, the work of anything is force times distance moved, okay? So the work... Remember, we just said it's a pressure times area times the length. Okay, so this is a work that's been pushed down. Now, we also know that the volume of the element um, of this um, uh, unit of liquid is the area times by the length. Okay, because it's um, basically a cylinder, isn't it? So it's this cross sectional area times the length. So therefore, we can replace the um, AL with the V. So therefore, the flow work, the the work to you know involved in this fluid flowing down the pipe, is PV. Okay, so remember this. We're going to um, come back and use this later on. So when we consider the energy in a fluid that's flowing through a device or along a pipe, then from conservation of energy, obviously energy can't be created nor destroyed, it's just transferred. Then we've got several energy terms um, that's associated with the fluid, and it's the energy is converting from one form to another. Okay, so we've got kinetic energy um, of the fluid, which is of course half m uh, half the mass times the velocity squared. We have gravitational potential energy, which is um, mass times gravity times um, z, or height of from a plane. The flow work, which um, I've just derived for you. And the final one is the internal energy of the fluid. Okay, so look back to your first year thermodynamics notes to, to understand what the internal energy is. And as I say, the, the, um, the sum of the energy in the fluid has got to be the sum of all these energies added together. So if we consider this pipe of some arbitrary cross-sectional area and it, um, our fluid is flowing from left to right from plane one to plane two and you can see in this example the, the cross-sectional area actually grows there's also a change in height as the um, fluid flows from left to right so you can see it's gaining um, potential energy and so on but we know that the energy that enters the pipe plane one has got to be the total energy here is going to be equal to the total energy that leaves the pipe at plane two. Okay, so using all those energies that we derived um, on the previous slide, we can add them together. Then the energy one is going to be equal to the energy of two, the conservation of energy. So if we set those equal, then we know what it's equal to is the kinetic energy, half um, mc squared. Um, plus the potential energy, and as I said, we can see that potential energy been increased, plus the flow work, um, or the energy, or the flow work um, we described, plus our final term, which is the internal energy, okay? So kinetic plus potential plus flow work plus internal energy is the sum of the energy um, at any point, and obviously in this system, what goes in must come out. So therefore, we can rewrite it as this, okay? So we're adding all the terms 
um, together, the kinetic potential, flow work, and internal energy. Okay. So this is where the new term enthalpy is introduced. Okay. And the enthalpy is the sum of the internal energy, okay, so U, and the flow work, the PV term. And in thermodynamics, this is given the symbol H, okay. And remember, it's capital H for a total quantity. And because it's energy, it has the units joules, okay. So we can write it like this. So the, the enthalpy is equal to the internal energy plus the flow work. So just to um, link this back now to steady flow system, so unlike a closed system where we have steady flow, you will have um, flow work uh, kind of being done, if, if I can say it like that. So therefore it's the enthalpy that's important because it's not just the change in internal energy, but also the flow work associated with it. Okay, so that's why I use enthalpy for these steady flow energy problems and uh, internal energy for the non-flow energy equation. Okay, so it's written like that. So um, H is equal to U plus PV. Now, remember that in thermodynamics, we can ex also express things as specific quantities. So if we divide through by um, the mass, okay, so everything's per unit mass, then we use the lowercase letters. So Again, little h, so the enthalpy is equal to the internal energy plus the pressure times the specific volume, okay? Now, because um, h is equal to, sorry, the enthalpy is equal to the internal energy plus pressure volume, okay, which you can see is this, these last two terms in this equation, then we can rewrite this in terms of enthalpy, in terms of the internal energy. So I hope you can see it just substituted that into this top equation to get this final relationship, okay? Now, so that was just the conservation of um, energy for that fluid flowing through, that, through our system or through our device, whatever it is. Now, as we kind of, I said in the first part of the lecture, normally with our devices, we've got um, heat transferred in the context of a cooler or a heater or work being done, um, you know, be it compressor or a turbine, or it might be a combination of both, okay? So now we need to start factoring this into our, um, into our energy balance, okay? So the net, so not only do we have a conservation of energy, um, in terms of the fluid it is flowing, but also we need to factor in the conservation of energy for the heat um, transferred and the work that is done, okay? So we can write it like this. If we think what is coming into our system, as it's shown, so we've got the, um, the total energy at plane one, okay, which is our uh, kinetic term plus our potential term plus our enthalpy, which remember is, um, the internal energy and the flow work. And you can see we're uh, using our convention that heat is being added to the system. And that's equal to everything that's leaving in plane two. So the kinetic energy, the potential energy, and the enthalpy of two, plus um, any work that's done by that fluid as well. Okay. So if we rearrange that, then this is what we get. So the net change between the um, the heat supplied and the work done, okay, is equal to the net change in energy for the fluid between points one and two. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. So um, again, it's just all based on conservation of energy. Um, so what goes in must come out. So an energy being transferred for, transferred from one form to another. So let me just say that again. So the um, so this basically forms our steady flow energy equation. Okay, so let me say again. So the heat difference between the heat supplied and the work done is equal to the change in the potential energy, the kinetic energy, and the enthalpy between states one and two. Okay. Now we can also, um, as I said, 
you write this per unit mass or with specific quantities. So if we divide everything through by mass, you can see uh, we've got this specific heat supplied minus specific work done is equal to, and you can see the mass disappears from this term, the mass disappears from this term, and we have our specific enthalpy. Okay, so this ultimate result here is this is the steady flow energy equation. Okay, and you'll be using these to, this to solve these types of problems. Now, just a note of um, warning here. So, when you apply, uh, or when or if you apply these, um, the steady flow energy equation to steam cycles, then the gas laws must not be used, okay? Because these don't apply to steam, because often the steam is, um, when you're looking at a, a vapor cycle, is um, uh, transferring from one state to another, and therefore the gas laws do not uh, um, apply. Okay, so I hope you are um, now able to derive and understand the steady flow energy equation and be able to use it for future calculations. Thank you.